Well, happily, the signs couldn't be better. Sir Jack Hayward's piggy bank has once more coughed up three pricey investments. Equally, if not more impressive, the transformation of Molyneux itself. Old, dilapidated stands, gone. I just want to see the performance on the pitch marry up to um, the stadium now. I just said, that's what people are going to turn around and say, you put all this money in now, here it is, it's, a, it's going to be a splendid stage, worthy of international football, but you want to get in the Premier League, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Premier League, on top of the Premier League um, Championship, and then, uh, F, well, FA Cup, same time. <laughs> Both in the same season. But we've got to get in the Premier League this season. Rose from the third, the old third, and uh, certainly the fourth division very rapidly, and uh, it would be fair to say we've stood still for, for two or three seasons, uh, and now there's got to be a big push for... Uh, over the final hurdle and get ourselves in the Premier League, where all the money is. The final stage of Molyneux's rebuilding is completed at Christmas. All that remains then, promotion next May. No ifs, no buts. <laughs> to celebrate the new Molyneux, invite the old guard. That was the theme for Saturday's Black Country opener. Former players present to celebrate £14 million worth of ground improvements. Construction at the South Bank is still to be completed, but when finished, it'll fully complement the John Island stand, the recently opened Stan Cullis stand, and the Billy Wright stand, which is scheduled for an official opening by the man himself before the game with Millwall next week. Money has been spent on the playing staff too, so this was a new beginning in every way, and it took only 14 minutes for them to score their first goal of the new season. Plenty has changed during the summer, but much has stayed the same, such as the goal scorer, Steve Ball. The first half performance was enterprising, exciting and full of promise for the season ahead. David Kelly ought to have given Wolves a well-deserved extension to their lead, but his unselfishness proved decisive. The new skipper had the next chance. A neat move gave Thomas a clear view of goal, but this was to be yet another good chance scorned. But last season's defensive frailties showed again after 35 minutes. Ian Baird's shot blocked by Mike Stowell but thereafter, Wolves almost gifted the equaliser. And that equaliser came 13 minutes into the second half. Fullback Martin Scott found his way into a large gap behind the defence, and his shot found its way under Mike Stowell. In many ways, it was a pattern typical of Wolves' showings last season. Impressive early match form followed by alarming lapses. But the lapses were quickly overshadowed by a goal from Derek Mountfield to put Wolves back in front. They were then down to ten men with five minutes remaining. Mark Venus, who'd already been booked for a foul in the first half, was sent off for a holding offence, a second bookable offence for which the punishment was obvious. It didn't deter them though, two minutes later another sweeping move gave Wolves a third. Cook started it, Keane continued it, and Ball scored his second of the game to conclude a satisfactory opening day's work. <laughs>